Good evening. Tonight, watercolour. Live lockdown painting. Episode 11. Mist in the mountains. Somewhat different setup this evening due to the nature of the medium and the free flowing qualities of the paint. I have to work at varied angles, but uh, I shall make a start. Now, this will be the uh, standard elevation. I think you can see that, but I will from time to time move things around. For example, I'm going to begin at a more shallow angle. And I can move the, uh, the watercolour paper around as we go. Now the reason for this shallow angle, and that is rather steeper than normal, is the uh, gravitational pull on the watercolour medium. So I'm going to begin with a wash. I've got some raw sienna. And look at the nature of the paint. Hope you can see that. Very fluid. When we say watercolour, we mean it. Lots of water. Especially as I'm starting with a very light tone. I just need to break the ice of this. Technical hitch, I believe. Are we still okay? Best to get these out of the way at the start. I can actually check on the screen. You see that drip? Lovely stuff. Let's have some ultramarine and some raw umber. I'll hold this up so you can see. You'll notice that the, the colour is pulled with gravity and forms a bead along the lowest edge. And that's all to the good because I can pick that up at any time and it won't dry into the paper. I hope you can see delicate washes intermingling. Get this ultramarine to dissolve into the raw sienna. I'm adding clean water to lighten the tone. Once I've done this, it should settle in. The more water, the lighter it goes, as you can see. The more pigment, the darker it goes. So if I just increase the volume of blue, You'll see it creates a darker tone and that should give me some atmospheric pulses of light through cloud. And providing it's, there's lots of moisture that will keep fusing together. Technically this is called the preliminary wash. That's a bit of a tongue twister, so it's often shortened to the ghost wash. I think we might just have a little natural light, Julie, if we could. Thank you. I'm just going to let that run right off the page. I 
let's now elevate that, it's safe to do so. I hope you can see more clearly now what's afoot. Those lovely tones. All of this is now moist. How's that looking? Hmm. Adjusting the light. Missing our technical crew here, but we're managing, I hope. This is coming over. Right. There's sometimes a little bit of waiting around with watercolour. You've got to get the timing right. You know, what I'm doing here is looking at the moisture content on that. But uh, while I'm waiting, I think I'll just do a little more work down below. It's sepia, sorry, not raw umber. With ultramarine. Just take this corner out here. All the time, I'm conscious of what's happening on the other side of the page. Watercolour is full of action. I'm doing this all the time. You get different viewpoints of this as we work. Sometimes even, we invert the, the page to drip the paint in different directions. Look at the edge of that I just painted. See how there's a slight fuzziness there. Now that's, uh, that's the moisture content on the page and it gives a quite a natural, almost tussocky, grassy look. And that's the edge of a, a rocky crag coming in, a ledge in the mountains. Mm. Dare we proceed? I think we shall. Let's uh, this away. Lots of water all the time. It's transparent. I want to see some blue, some delicate blue. Let's have a look. This is virtually dried at the top. The moisture has been pulled towards the lower edge of the paper. You see it pulling these strands of colour with it. Look at that wet edge there. It's ready to drip. Dangerous territory. I don't mind a few drips tonight. This technique is geared towards working on a more acute angle than would be the norm. Look what I have to hand.
drip away. Constantly looking at the sheen on the paper. Need to wait a little bit there. While I'm waiting, I'm going to go on this side. Hoping that will be a touch drier there. Mainly ultramarine with a little bit of sepia. clean water. Spraying out the lower edge there. Now I'm going to drop some stronger colour in at the top. Same colour, just a little darker. Look at these cauliflowers. It's where the water has dripped over my dark wash. I'll put that back shortly. You have to have eyes in the back of your head. Lovely. This is a quite a vertical subject up in the high mountains. So these drips are all to the good. I'm going to go back at this now. Just looking at the moisture content again. Let's see what we can get this time. There's a uh, general consensus that watercolour can be tricky, and it is a bit tricky. It's difficult, more difficult to demonstrate than, say, oil painting, I think. Because you have to have your constantly looking at the uh, performance of the wash and judging the timing. 
but uh, if you don't have the pressure of explaining what you're doing and you can just get into the flow of things, a bit of experience is great fun and very evocative. Trying to achieve soft focus shapes of looming mountains. With the spray technique, you can keep working at these delicacies. Keeping away from this area and focusing the moisture on the lower edges. I think we'll have a little passage of cloud or water here. Isn't that great? Time to go a little richer and stronger. Let's have a, a few more colours, very limited palette. Let's try some of this. I've got the hair dryer to hand. I prefer not to use it. I'd much rather go for a cup of tea and allow things to dry. But now and again, it just needs a helping hand if you're trying to work at pace and certainly to demonstrate. So the hair dryer may come into play. And as the page dries, as the paper dries, the edges will become more focused, creating a notch in the mountains here. This is where the action will be. Hold on to your hats. Working around the camera. Well, we can see a cascade appearing. Do you notice on the paper there's a very slight cockling, a slight buckling? I've stretched the paper so it minim that minimises the amount of water that's in play. We can expect a little bit of that. But if you get thicker paper, that's greatly reduced. But I will say, ideally, you would work on watercolour paper. This is about £140. It's not, uh, not as thick as I might use. But uh, I went to check the stores and they are somewhat depleted of the heavy stuff. So I've stretched this paper up. Just watching that dry. An artist friend of mine once came up 
furtively. Tom Murphy, Barrow artist, and uh, he looked a bit furtive and said, uh, Graham, can I have a word? I said, yeah. All right, Tom. And he said, uh, you know, when they say, uh, it's like watching paint dry. I went, yeah. He said, they mean like it's, it's boring. Yeah. And then he said, he sort of looked over his shoulder and then turned and said, I quite like watching paint dry, like a confession. And I went, do you? And he, his eyes went side to side and he said, yeah. And I said, so do I. And he brightened up when I said that. Oh, it's fantastic, isn't it? And then we were all swapping notes about watching paint dry. <laughs> it's because of watercolour. That's what you're doing, constantly watching the paint dry. So that, that uh, it's a, a curious term to watercolourists, watching paint dry, because it's all they ever do. And that's drying fairly fast under these lights and thin paper. Right, so time to progress. Let's see if we can pull a little bit of uh, firmness into some of these shapes. Mm, let's have a look. We'll have a, a rising pinnacle of a rock here. Still a little bit damp. When it's just right, you might be able to create some trees that are soft focused. That's a touch too green. Let's try this. Mm, it's better. Let's see if we can create some vegetation. clinging to the cliffs. I always think of Borrowdale with this sort of stuff. Yikes, that's a touch. <laughs> that's a little bit of uh, a staining colour. It's permanent rose, it's lovely colour. It just stained in a bit there. Now that's better. I've, I've tempered it with some blue. I'm trying to create a plunging cliff here. the mist pluming up, the inversion pluming against the rocks. It's actually fairly fast paced, all this, but uh, it might take longer than the oil demonstrations. I don't propose to go on too long. You're constantly just waiting around for a few seconds for things to dry. But I'll put the hairdryer on for the final stage. Now up here, that's probably drying out. I don't want it bone dry. A little bit of moisture is good. Yes, there's some moisture in there. I'll put some fir trees in here. Let's check with the tech lab that everything's still working. See, the essence of it is to learn to work with the paint. With oils, you, whatever you paint is what you get. The brush strokes hold firm and the description you put in remains. But with watercolour, you're trying to exploit the medium and while it's in this damp condition, you get these transient edges. Very beautiful. 
And when you want it to be crisp, you just let it dry out. So when it's in this condition, you can't control it. You have to work with it. You can control it to a degree, but uh, the essence is allowing the paint to form the image as well. So there's unexpected things constantly uh, while well, you're hoping that they'll, that they'll be happy accidents as well as the general idea of what you're trying to achieve. This is drying out really well. It just looks like a, a plume of mist rising out of a deep crevice in the mountains. And this is a waterfall redolent of uh, Launchy Gill or somewhere like that. It's made up. And um, often my paintings have an oriental look when I work like this. It's undeniable. It's a, like, uh, Western painting is heavily influenced by the Orient especially in landscapes. And uh, there's a little book I love, which really opened my eyes to this, was, uh, you may be familiar with this one, The Silent Traveller in Lakeland, Chiang Yi, who was an exile from China in the 1930s, found himself in Britain, touring round, and he absolutely loved the lakes. And his technique of painting in the lakes was to walk. He walked into Borrowdale, and then absorb the landscape and then uh, when he was ready back at his digs he would light some candles write a poem and then make his painting from memory and uh, it's a uh, like an eastern way of working and it, it, it uh, strikes a chord with me that approach mm, loving these atmospherics appearing rather fancy a little bit of foreground to need a cup of tea. Just to hold this up again. Such delicacies, delicacies of uh, tone in these areas and the strength coming through and the gravity pulling the colours. I hope that's coming across. Right. My uh, errant cauliflowers there, the, the dread of watercolorists. I wasn't bothered at all in this corner because it's going to be fairly dark. But, uh, let me just pull in a little bit of context here. Ten more minutes, quarter of an hour, should wrap this up. I'd like to go back to this when it's thoroughly dry and maybe make some definition in the, the mountains rising into cloud. lower portion of the paper is saturated. Everything's been dripping down to here. I'd like to get some soft focus pine trees descending into the ravine. See the, the moisture working with the brush to create these soft pulses of tone. There's the tops of some coniferous trees. We'll take this entire left corner out with this.
Ooh, a lovely bit of green there. You can see that. Let's uh, raise the bar. It's a better angle. I need to train somebody up on the other end of the camera. And then uh, next thing is to learn some editing. Because the lockdown will eventually finish and so will my little Wednesday evening sessions. Very sad to draw a line under them. But next week, today is the 11th, next week will be the 12th. That is an academic term. But uh, I shall be doing more, but maybe not uh, on a weekly basis, and I'll start to post videos that maybe have some editing as well as the live action. As those dry, you can add layer upon layer, but I quite like how that's dropping down into the valley. So back over to this side, what do we have? We have a section now that is probably a lot drier. Let's hope we can do something with this. Mm, there's still moisture in there, but that's not a bad thing. Let's bring my rocky crag back into focus. So the, the technique to learn is that the, uh, the more paint and the less moisture in the brush, the darker the tone. That's the essence of the whole procedure. I always underline such statements with the fact that it's not the only way to work. You can work in opaque colour, but it's the generally accepted, the best qualities of watercolour, at least to modernise now, is this lovely transparency. And the, uh, even the darks have a transparent quality. I've got some of the crimson in now to get some colour, a little bit of viridian green. The crimson is, is uh, permanent rose, I should say. You'll notice something appearing, I hope, now. See this technique with the brush held on the side. Look in the center of this, uh, this block of color. I hope you see two light tree trunks appearing. Sneak a little thing I did before I switched on the camera. I'll tell you about that now. I used a little bit of masking fluid, which I tend to use very sparingly. But the masking fluid That will protect the paper from the washes and you see the, the, the stuff I've used there repelled the colour so you can you can preserve delicate light shapes if you need to. Those who like to brag and boast about their proficiency with a brush would just work around that but uh, us lesser mortals sometimes reach for the masking fluid when we want to apply these light lines it's counter change again. 
So let's uh, gonna spread these bristles a bit. Let's uh, let's put in some pine trees. Got a very dark mix here. This is the uh, crimson and the green, which is almost a black. And the script liner brush, preserved just for use with watercolour. This is the palette, by the way, I meant to show you that. I was trying to get the camera to pick up both, but it was too challenging without Sean and Anna on hand. Julie and I did our best, but uh, the palette is, you can see it's very limited and it's on a ceramic dish, a white ceramic dish. Does look a bit Juan Shan. I'd love to visit the Far East. I've never been yet, but uh, I'd certainly love to go and see these places: Guilan, Tibet. This is my lovely Lake District with an Oriental twist. Mr. Chiang Yi influencing the style of painting. I have to be brave, I'd like to dissolve some of these. Let them drip and cascade into the valley, keeping them a bit clearer at the top. Live lockdown watercolour. Hope you can see that. Great fun to do. When this dries, I'd rework again. I'd like to put a little bit of form up into there, but I hope you found that uh, fluid method interesting to watch. Certainly very evocative. Look how my fir trees have dissolved away with that moisture. Just ready to go back in and put some more in. I'll do a little bit of work to this and then post it again as, as per usual. Thanks very much for watching. It's great fun. We'll have to think of something for you next week.
Good night, everybody. <laughs>